welcome to the boat tour 2.0. <laughs> Last year we gave you a tour of the inside of our boat so we thought it's only right if we tour the outside today. Beautiful anchorage, lovely setting. So we thought yeah, let's do it. We would start with the front this time round and work our way back. So, starting with the front, as you know, we installed our bow sprit last year. We installed our bow sprit so we could fly our Code Zero sail. Jalen's favourite area, the trampolines, mm -hmm. which you're not allowed to bounce on, but we bounce on them anyway. Fly on our cushions that we had made in the UK. Yeah. Underneath the middle cushion is the um, hatch to the anchor locker, which we'll go through in a minute. And we have Two bow lockers, port and starboard. So we line the bow lockers out with plywood, marine ply, varnish, fiberglass to the walls down there. So we could just screw cleats to the wall and give us a bit of organization so we can quickly reach in, lean out rather than jumping into a messy locker all the time, which was generally the case on the last boat. So that's what we've done and it's definitely worked. Definitely recommend it. All right, so this is our bow locker. Hello. <laughs> Doubled up when Jay's annoyed with me, she sends me in here. Yeah. So as you can see, we line our bow lockers with some ply, marine ply. Um, rope storage for easy access. We've got a gas bottle strapped in down here. Pretty much the same on the other side. So that is our bow lockers. Um, nice depth, plenty of storage in them, but don't store too much in them because you cause listing issues, unless you balance yourself out. So the port bow locker is pretty much the same as this one. We're not going to bore you with taking you through another locker, but you get the general gist. Let's move on. Oh, I've got to try and get out of here now. <laughs> oh, that was close. Now I can put all the mess back in it. Yeah. Well, it's not that bad to be honest with you. Only one extra bucket. So next is our anchor locker. Mm -hmm. Our anchor locker is under the middle cushion. We had these designs, so they were easy just to unzip, flip over, like this. Again, plenty of space in here. So we've got our 300 litre water tank, just under where Jay is at the moment. Um, windless, plenty of chain. I think we've got 70 meters of chain. Um, and uh, ron Ronka, Ronka? Rockner. And a, yeah, so we've got 70 metres of chain and a Rockner. Rockner. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, we have our windlass, 70 metres of chain, and our Ronker. Is that Rockner. it? Rockner. Rockner. <laughs> Jesus, Rockner. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, we have our water tank there, 300 litres, which is plenty big enough for us. We've got our windlass, electric windlass, which we can control from a remote up here, up top. Well, we can yes, yeah, so we can control it from, let me try that one. And we've got our windlass here. How, what's the anchor called again? Rockner. Rock. Let me just get to the anchor, then I can tell by the windlass. So we've got our windlass, 70 meters of chain. What is it? Are you having a lot? Rockner. 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 Like a rock with an N-A at oh, the uh, end. Oh, okay, I got it now. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our windlass here, 70 metres of chain, and our Rockner anchor. Is that it? Right. We've got 23 kg anchor. I mean, it's the biggest one we could get for the shaft limb. So it was enough with the manta swivel, so it didn't impact the uh, the windows at all it's, so it's the heaviest we could have gone mm -hmm. i think it's one or two up from what they recommend for the boat but we decided that we we wanted to go for a bigger anchor we did reinforce sort of the, the outlet with these stainless steel plates that my granddad made um because these aren't on there so if, when the chain comes up it bangs around and chips away the fiberglass so we installed these this is from the factory but these weren't these three pieces we fitted these anti-slip sort of tapes just so when you're coming in and it's a little bit wet you've got a little bit of grip we usually put our fenders in here but they are currently behind jane got a code zero nicely tucked in here but we also had a salt water pump fitted from the factory which comes with this tap here so this tap there's a 
a hose pipe in there so as the ch um, chain's coming up if there's any mud we can just or sand or whatever we can just rinse it off with this tap our windlass is controlled from two locations one from a handheld remote here and also from the helm in the anchor locker we also store spare fuel we're currently trying to design a new storage system i'm probably going to line out this wall here the same that we've done in the bow lockers so i can ratchet fuel all the way along there have a sort of a ledge and then store some more things up there i'm thinking of maybe like a an airtight container so we can put our bin rubbish when we're doing long passages master electronics run down connections there windless relay water pump is located in that box so this is our house gas nice space for a fairly decent sized bottle and it's easy to change as well right up here yeah 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 that's pretty much it with the anchor locker when i imagine telling you about it I, it sounded a lot more excited in my head than it actually is mm -hmm. but the ankle looker i love it it's where i spend the majority of my time right just put these in yeah i do this is our paddleboard we did have two but one went missing don't know if it was one of alfie's dodgy bow lines or it got stolen but it got Everyone. stolen. Yeah. <laughs> We've got brackets for it, so it's just really easy to store. Just put it in, clip it over, job done. We like to make things simple, so I think that was a good investment. Yeah. And this is Alfie's pride and joy, his halyard bag. It keeps everything tidy, all the ropes I away. So we also replaced all the lines that came with the boat to racing Dyneema because the ones that came with the boat had a bit of a bad reputation of breaking quite easily. So we kept all of those in the bow lockers for now, um, just in case something happens to these, we've got a replacement already cut to size, ready to go. And next we'll show you our bimini. So we also got this aftermarket. It was something that we couldn't really afford when we ordered the boat, but felt that we actually needed it. So we ordered it from FP recently and fitted it ourselves. Welcome to the helm area. So, starting from right to left, we have our winch bag, which is handy because on, on our old boat, we could never find the winch. Now we know where they always are. Mm -hmm. Comes with a nice bucket where you can put all the, like, the loose ends of the rope. Usually we do neat them up, but we've been reefing so much recently. I couldn't be bothered, so they're in there. We have three winches. The furthest one to the right is an electric winch, which makes life a lot easier lifting the main with the main halyard. Jamming cleats for your main and your free reefs. We have a free reefing system on this boat. First reef, they call an automatic reef, which is basically just a single line reef system. And reefs two and reefs three basically pull down the back of the sail and you've got to go up to the mast and just strap the reef two and reef three hole at the mast. Um, works fine, works good. Engine controls, starboard engine, port engine, forward and back. Two engines, it makes life a lot easier, don't you think? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, easier to control in and out of marina. You can hold the boat stationary very well. Oh, you can pretty much turn the boat on itself. Steering wheel, I hope all of you know what a steering wheel is. Um, steers the boat. Compass, trusted compass. We have our navigation electronics. We've got small screen here which controls our bearing for our um, autopilot um, tells we can disengage and activate the autopilot change the course by segments of 10 or 1 degrees and our chart plotter here which connects to the chart plotter at the helm station which tells you where we're going it's basically like a tom tom for boat but, but gives you other information so like wind angle wind speed speed of the boat depth of the water velocity made good navigational information all stuff like that barometer Barometer, yeah, we've got a digital barometer wired up into it, which helps massive. This is our electronic chain counter where we, we can actually lower and raise the anchor from here. And it also tells us how much chain we've got out. And the last thing is the strap that we fit as well. Oh yeah, so when we go into a marina, we completely let go of the wheel. We don't use the wheel, we only use the engine controls. Found at the beginning, when we was going like hard in reverse or hard reverse or even slightly in reverse on one of the engines, it would really throw the wheel over and threw the direction of the boat off a little bit. So we installed 
get a little strap here so when we're going in we can just go click tighten it up and then can't really go anywhere and also we have a semi fly bridge on this lucia 40 as opposed to a fly bridge on most bigger boats they would have the helm completely up there on the top of the coach roof but this is a semi fly I find it's a lot more sociable and it's, it's a nicer sail for, for, especially for two of us we've got steps to go up so you can access the boom and steps to come down so you can get into the cockpit yeah. let's do the cockpit yeah, let's do it. Let's go. So this is the last area to show you and it's our cockpit area. So we've got a wooden table, corner sofa, back sofa and a little return side bench yeah side bench and um <laughs> <laughs> we put these two chairs here as well just to sort of make it a bit more sociable when we have guests uh we also just bought this cushion we wanted to put a cushion there because we've seen it on some other cats and you do get more of a breeze we also just added two fishing poles so one can hold the rod the other one can hold the fillet table when we do catch fish. We also installed this barbecue ourselves. It's the Eno Cook and Boat Plancher barbecue. And Alfie and his granddad fitted this piece so that the gas wire could run through it and it would just be subtle and not really noticeable. So it looks like it's part of the boat. And we also have got outdoor speakers which came with the boat as well, which is great. We didn't have that on our last boat. We've also got an outdoor shower um, that came with the boat, but this didn't. Um, we installed that afterwards ourselves, and that is a freshwater outlet um, so that when we clean the boat, we can just plug a hose in there and clean it all. So it just makes life so much easier because I don't actually know how we would have cleaned the boat without that. Bucket? Bucket. Wow, that's necessary. Yeah. Yeah, that is. that is actually. Boom ladders just here. We yeah. might change this in the future just to a telescopic one because it is just a little bit too large and in the way sometimes. So once this gets old and we have to replace it, we'll probably change it to a small one. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the only other thing is we have two storage areas in the cockpit. Uh, one is just under this seat and we just have our gas bottle in there and our fillet table just outdoor bits and bobs and the other one is here we're going to install a freezer here soon in a couple of days <laughs> it's waiting for us in the marina just a few extra things about the um, cockpit area uh, we've got a life raft here this is the area which is designed for the life raft to go we have an eight man life raft I uh, have a manual build pump here. In this locker, there is a hose that can extend to any build in the boat. The electric build pumps aren't man enough or it just needs a bit extra. And just pump like that. Two davit arms to lift up our dinghy. They claim to lift 100 kg each. Um, we're not gonna test it. We installed this winch as you guys. Uh, uh, um, I installed it. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> you and Jaden installed this winch. As you already know, if you've seen our other videos for our code zero to control the port sheet. But it also doubles up nicely to lift the engine side of the dinghy, which, yeah. which worked wonderful. Yeah, we've got the extra cleats. I don't know which ones were extra. I think these ones might have been extra. Yeah. And these were standard of the boat, but we yeah. got um, two extra cleats at the start of the boat um, because it was cheap. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> so, dun, 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 dun. port engine bay. We have got two D130 30 horsepower Volvo Penta engines, um, both sail drive. Over into the engine bay, we have our Cummins Onan generator. It allows us to run our aircon whilst at anchor, do some washing whilst at anchor on the washing machine. All of our 230 volt switch gear here. We have also in here our hot water cylinder, which 24 litres that heats up 
water so we can have hot water on the boat. Heats up from the engine, from the starboard side engine and from the mains. The grey batteries with the three original batteries that come with the boat. And we installed an additional three 125 amp hour batteries. We doubled the, the current battery capacity size as opposed to going to lithium. One, because we couldn't afford lithium. And two, because we couldn't afford lithium. So yeah. basically, so lithium is on the cards in the future and we'll probably upgrade our solar with that as well. By doubling our sort of battery capacity, we've had no issues with energy at all. We don't have any, any power consumption issues. We sort of use what we want when we want to use it. Run the generator when we need to use either the aircon or um, the washing machine. But other than that, we rely solely on our 12 volt power supply and we haven't had an issue. Well, we've never hit below 94%. 94 is the lowest I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, but usually, I mean, every time I check, it's always 100%. Yeah, or 98. Yeah, yeah. I've checked. In the morning, sometimes it runs a bit lower, but that's because we're charging our laptops and stuff overnight. Yeah. This is our dinghy. It's a high filled 310 um, aluminium bottom dinghy, and we have a 15 horsepower Suzuki outboard as well. Um, the reason why we chose the Suzuki outboard was because it was batteryless electronic fuel injection. Because it has a batteryless electronic fueling injection. <laughs> well done. <laughs> we bought it out of the factory because there was just a big saving in doing so. We got it for half the price than what we would have. Oh, do you say three tanks is the biggest that, f that, that fits between the two? And we got 310 because it was the biggest um, size that we could get for this boat. 310 equals 3.1 meters. Ah, and we got the 310 because it equals 3.1 meters and that was the biggest size that we were able to get for this boat. Perfect. Let's go to the solar panels. Solar panels, they equal to 300 watts, um, which is actually very sufficient for us. Uh, because we haven't had any problems, maybe because of the batteries as well. And we got FP to do them because of COVID. We were meant to fit them ourselves, but because we couldn't get the boat ourselves from La Rochelle, we um, had to get them fitted. So happy we done it. It was one less job to do and they fit nicely in the inserts. They do look neat, don't they? Yeah. So that is it. Thank you for watching our tour. We hoped it helped you in some way. Sorry if this audio is not lining up with the video, but basically we lost our sound on this clip and we have no idea what we're saying, so it probably looks like a dubbed movie. <laughs> like Jay just said, we hope you enjoyed the video and if there's anything more that you want us to elaborate on or cover, just hit us up in the comments and we'll make sure to include it in another video or yeah, just let us know. Have a good weekend. Bye. See ya.